Garrett Blevins here with week seven, day one of Cube Kingpin. This is the first in the weeks where uh, singles are included. Um, and so this is the uh, heavy deadlift day. Felt really good today. Weights were moving fast. Felt that my form was uh, pretty good. At the end of these uh, three sets with uh, one double and then two singles, you're supposed to drop the weight and then rep out. But I decided to just rep with the heavier weight, both because my back has been bothering me and also because I think that this... Uh, this weight, which is 95% of my 365 strong number, is actually a lot less than 95%. And that was proven here. Um, you shouldn't be able to rep six uh, with 95% of your one rep max. So I'm definitely uh, making some strength gains. Um, things are looking pretty good for the end of the cycle. And I don't know exactly what the last rep PR I had. I was looking back through my workout logs. Um, I think the closest I found was like a 530 or a 540 for six. And so it was at least 40 more pounds than the last time that I'd repped out. Like I mentioned previously, I'm working on tricep strength as well. And so I've added some floor press in um, after my deadlifts now. And I took a different angle here to look at the elbows. Really, I'm working on pulling the bar apart. And that works better for me than trying to bend the bar to activate the lats and the rear delts. But a good day all in all. I was reading Psalm 31 with my wife earlier today. Um, and it really is very similar uh, to Psalm 22. They're both lament psalms. And also, Jesus on the cross in Luke uh, quotes this line, into your hand I commit my spirit. And so both uh, Psalm 22 and Psalm 31 have lines where Jesus is saying them on the cross. It's important to note in this psalm that David, who is the one writing it, in reference to when he's uh, besieged by his enemies, says, I said in my alarm, I'm cut off from your sight. But you heard the voice of my pleas. And so God doesn't get mad at us if we fail or if we get scared and we start to doubt. You look at Peter when he's walking on the water. When he starts to sink because he looks at the wind and the waves and is afraid, Jesus doesn't abandon him. He picks him up. And I think that God the Father is working with Jesus on the cross the same way, even though he's afraid. In our own lives, when we are afraid of death or afraid of the situations that we're in, um, afraid of circumstances, afraid of the unknown, God's not going to abandon us, even if we say things that we might not really mean, or say things that correlate to how we feel at the time. God is fine with us expressing that. Jesus expresses that on the cross, and David expresses that in these Psalms. But that doesn't mean that God abandons them. In fact, God does the opposite, delivers them. Blessings.